Hello everyone, I'm Natalie Stryland. I am a solicitor and director of NR Barbie Solicitor. We act for the applicants in the COVID-19 vaccine class action that was commenced in 2023. The action is being funded by Dr Melissa McCann. The applicant suffered an injury as a result of taking the Pfizer, AstraZeneca or Moderna COVID-19 vaccines. The action is against various Australian government departments and offices who advanced the acceptance and use of these COVID-19 vaccines. The applicants allege that their actions constitute negligence and misfeasance in public office. I encourage you to continue watching this video as Dr McCann explains the science behind the vaccines. If you would like more information about the action or to register to be a group member, I encourage you to visit our COVID-19 vaccine class action website by clicking the link on the screen now. The COVID vaccines are very different to the traditional childhood vaccines. Traditional vaccines contain a piece of or weakened form of the virus or bacteria, which is called an antigen and the immune system recognises this antigen as foreign, and this triggers the immune response. The immune response then has a memory function, so that this antigen is remembered by the white blood cells. And then the next time this antigen is encountered, the immune system can respond more quickly. This memory function of the immune system is the concept behind vaccination. I will use the mRNA vaccines, the Pfizer and Moderna products, to illustrate the differences between the COVID vaccines and traditional vaccines. The mRNA vaccines contain RNA or ribonucleic acid, which is contained in a lipid nanoparticle. RNA is similar to DNA in that they are both genetic code. DNA is found in the nucleus of all cells and contains all of the instructions for life for every cell. Inside of cells, the DNA is converted to RNA and there are several types of RNA. One type of RNA called messenger or mRNA is a code, like a recipe or instruction, to tell the cell how to make a specific protein. And for the COVID vaccines, part of the RNA genetic code inside the nanoparticle is the mRNA or messenger RNA instructions to tell our cells to make the coronavirus spike protein. So the messenger RNA part of the genetic code is translated into the spike protein by ribosomes in our own cells. And after our cells make the spike protein, the immune system recognizes this as a foreign protein or an antigen, and this triggers the immune response. Our immune system then makes antibodies against the spike protein. And the memory function of the immune system means that when the coronavirus spike protein gets into our body from COVID infection, our bodies will be ready to make antibodies to destroy the COVID virus. And so that is the concept behind the design of these new types of vaccines. But there are two major issues with the design of these vaccines. The first is that our own cells are being instructed by the foreign synthetic genetic code RNA to make the foreign protein. And our immune system works by recognizing and destroying foreign antigens or proteins. So when the immune system recognizes the spike protein produced by our cells as foreign, it will trigger inflammation and may start to destroy our own cells and tissues. And this is called autoimmunity. There are actually now hundreds of scientific papers that have described various autoimmune diseases occurring after the COVID vaccines. For example, the literature reports myocarditis, thyroid disease, type 1 diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, Guillain-Barre, and other autoimmune diseases. So we do know that this effect is occurring after the COVID vaccines. The second major issue is the use of the nanotechnology called the nanolipid particles to carry the RNA genetic material. The vaccine approval trials tell us that these nanolipids travel very quickly after vaccination throughout the entire body, including across the blood brain barrier into the spinal cord, to the ovaries, testes, heart, bone marrow, essentially throughout the entire body. This means that the genetic code RNA is carried to all cells and tissues 
and therefore all cells and tissues could develop autoimmune disease after making the spike protein. But these nanolipids have also never before been used in humans, so we do not know the short or long-term effects from their use. We do not know if the nanolipids themselves may trigger an immune response and cause inflammation. What we do know from the approval trials is that the nanolipids were not cleared by the kidneys, which is how other nanoparticles are usually cleared from the body. They were also not cleared by the liver, and so we do not actually know how, if, or when these nanoparticles leave the body. We do not know if there could be toxic effects if they are retained in the body, or if they may build up with repeat dosing. We do know that build up of synthetic lipid products in the body has been known to cause toxic effects, including cancer, and to be retained in tissues for long periods of time. For example, the synthetic lipid pesticide, DDT. Tons of DDT are used in this fight against the dread disease. We also know from the approval trials that the nanolipids cause some abnormalities in the animal studies, such as altering blood counts, altering liver function, and causing significant inflammation. 